Oh my gosh. Hello and welcome back to yet another ultralight rod video. I've done a lot of these things now, but today we are talking about the Daiwa Procyon. This is the only rod I brought with me today. It is the heat of the day. I'm hiding in the shade right now, but we're just going to try to catch fish with this. You know the drill. I catch fish, I talk about the rod. At the end of this video, I will share my final thoughts on this thing. But for right now, let's go catch some fish. Let's put a little flex in this puppy. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, as mentioned, this is a really unique rod. This is a six foot one ultralight, it says it's a fast action, and then the lure rating is one. 132nd through 1 8th and then line rating one through four pound test now i'm just casting a 132nd ounce mule jig with a dakota sunrise horsefly on there i'm probably going to switch at some point because this water is really stained i think i want to upsize and just kind of actually focus on ultralight bass fishing today i think i'm just going to throw a donkey tail but for right now We'll start with the uh, horsefly because that's what we have tied on. I've got this paired up with the Daiwa Revros LT1000 and six pound J-Braid to a four pound monofilament leader. I just saw something swim up beneath this, but I missed him. There he is. Ah, uh, just a dinky bass, but there you go. You can honestly see the way that rod tip is flexing right there. And uh, that's gonna bring me to my first point. This rod is very, very, very unique. I actually kind of think this rod is categorized improperly. This is a dinky little bass right here, so you can't expect it to uh, bend a rod much. But the thing about this rod that is so unique and so interesting is look at that rod tip. I hope you can see that. That is extra fast. That is not a fast action. That is a straight up extra fast action. That is awesome. It's super unique, but I think they should probably label it extra fast instead of fast. This thing does not bend past about the fourth guide. And that is highly, highly, highly unique for an ultralight rod. Honestly, I would say for the amount of pressure that it requires to bend this rod, I would categorize this as a light extra fast. They obviously have it categorized as an ultralight fast, and it's not the end of the world, but ultimately, just based on the flex of this rod, I don't think this is an ultralight fast. I think it's, an, I think it's a light extra fast. Just my perspective. My perspective is based on all these other rods I've tested. I've fished with numerous ultralights now, and I can tell you this one is very, very different. The rod that I would say this is actually kind of similar to is the Dobbins. The only thing with the Dobbins is it flexes down the backbone more once you put a little bit of pressure on it. So I do feel that the Dobbins is an ultralight. Um, it's closer to the light side of things, but it's definitely better at flexing down the backbone than this rod is. I'm getting some short strikes up there. You can go watch that Dobbins video um, after this if you'd like. I made that about a year ago or whatever. There's a little bluegill. Wow, he's got some awesome colors. He's really shiny. Cool fish. What the heck? He didn't even get hooked. He just ate the jig head first. That was wild. The other thing that is actually similar about the Dobbins with this rod is how thin the rod tip is. And really, I should not be fishing with braid on this rod because I would say that's probably a risk of breaking my rod tip. But this is actually a good opportunity to call out one other thing I really, really like about this rod that I wish more rod companies would do. You see how they wrapped these first four guides with orange as compared to black? That makes them more visible. So if you get a little bit of a bite, and you're not really paying attention, you're gonna be able to see it in the rod tip. I think that's extremely clever, and it really doesn't probably cost the rod company too much more to do that. So I'm honestly surprised that more rods don't do stuff like this. Is that a fish? Oh, snap. It's a big old bass. What the heck just happened? Oh my gosh, he doesn't even know he's hooked. Oh, now he does. <laughs> oh Lord, that's a good one. Sorry if I have water on my lens. Hopefully you can see what's going on right now. Okay, maybe I don't want to switch to the full-size donkey tail because he just ate this horse fly. It goes to show, my friends, nice bass still eat little things. That's a big fish. If it wasn't post-spawn, it would be even bigger. Holy smokes. <gasps> oh, I should have probably just netted it right there, but I am a doofus. But look at that rod tip right there. Look at how it's bending. It is like barely bending. This rod is wild to me. Again, it's not gonna be, you know, this rod isn't necessarily meant for the big, big fish, but I would not categorize this as an ultralight. Oh gosh. Give me that. Okay. Why am I not using my net again? Okay, okay. This fish, this fish, uh, ugh. this fish during the spawn would have been a real nice one. Look at that. It's probably close to 18 inches. And there you have it. 
You know, that uh, ultralight rod handled that fish quite well. That's a nice bass right there. I was not expecting to catch a bass like that on the little horsefly, but like I said, it goes to show that these big bass will still eat the small stuff too. Gotta love ultralight fishing, boys. You just gotta love it. Beautiful fish. Turn her loose. See you, girl. Here we go. And there's the kick. Down to the depths. As far as aesthetics of this rod goes, you know, it's just a basic cork grip, split grip, but it's a really small split grip section. Um, it's a little bit thinner than I'm used to with cork, but all in all, it feels pretty good. And then as far as balance goes, with this size 1000, I would say it's pretty neutrally balanced. You know, like I said, I really probably shouldn't be fishing braid with this rod. I think I would be better off throwing monofilament solely because the rod tip is so thin. The other thing is I think the monofilament might cast just a little bit better on this rod. The braid casts well with light stuff, but I think it does a little bit better when the rod loads up a little bit. And this rod does not load up like at all. So I would say if you're looking for a rod that can cast really, really ultralight gear with, this is probably not the best bet for you. This rod right here has a little bit harder time with some of the super ultralight stuff, like 164th and whatnot. You know, I'm casting this 132nd as far as I would need to, but it definitely gets less distance than some of my other rods. Here's a bite. What do we got here? Hey, is that a crappie? Hey, oh, I'll take a crappie. Sweet. Three species, baby. Not a big crappie, but a crappie. Little guy. See ya, bud. You know what I totally forgot? Shout out to my buddy Dave for actually picking this rod up for me. Um, I don't know if I would have ever found this rod had it not been for Dave. A uh, nice bluegill right here, really small. Oh well. Um, the point is, my buddy Dave picked this rod up for me and I bought it from him on a fishing trip in the winter. You know, I've been fishing with it numerous times now, and so I've gotten a decent amount of flex in this rod, and I can safely say that I like it, but I definitely like it for different reasons than a lot of my other ultralights. I guess one thing that I haven't really mentioned, oh, there's a bluegill biting up my line. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned, there he's got it. <laughs> He was biting at my line and I reeled this up in front of his face and he ate it. That was stupid. <laughs> you're a dumb bluegill, you know that? No offense, but you're, you're kind of dumb. Um, the one thing that I haven't mentioned is I think this rod, if I remember correctly, I think it's around $80. $70 to $80 if I'm not mistaken. Come on, be a crappie. It is a crappie, not a big one but it's a crappie. I had to figure that there'd be something uh, suspended next to that swimming dock right there. There's not huge populations of crappie in here, but there's a few nice ones. Here's one. Hey, what's this? White perch. All right, interesting day. Lots of variety. Little dinky white perch, and he is trying to eat my horsefly. Look at that. You know, I used to catch white bass a lot in Kansas, and when I caught one of these white perch the first time, I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Is that a white bass? And I realized shortly after, after doing some research, that it's actually white perch. They're very, very similar looking, but there are certainly some uh, differences. It's been a while since I threw the full-size donkey tail. I'm actually really excited right now. I'm just throwing on a 1 32nd ounce mule jig, um, just because I want a really slow rate of fall. With this dirtier water, that slower rate of fall will allow those fish to find it a little bit easier. Not a bad little crappie. He was under the dock. There we go. Broke the little dry streak on this uh, donkey tail. There you go. There we go. Anybody else home? There's another one. All right, two under that dock. I wonder if there's also some brush under there. Two crappie and two casts. I like that. They're sitting on this, uh, sitting under this dock where there's some nice shade. Here's one. Oh, I'm trying to mess with my pedals. And I just got a, looks like a green sunfish uh, bluegill hybrid. There you go. Got him. It's gotta be a bluegill. He's fighting hard though. Oh snap. Oh snap. Holy smokes. It's a big bluegill. Oh, that's a bluegill green sunfish hybrid. And it's a tank. It's a green sunfish bluegill hybrid. That's a freaking beefcake. A straight up bluegill would have had a hard time getting its mouth all the way around the donkey tail, but that green sunfish hybrid has a much larger mouth. All right, see ya buddy. Not exactly my best release, but we got him back. That's another one. That has to be a bass. Oh, he ditched it. 
Daggum and I shouldn't have let him jump. That was a nice one. Two and a half pounder probably. That's gotta be another one of those sunfish coming right at me. I'm trying to catch up with him. Might be bigger than I realize. Might be a bass. Oh, it is a bass. I can't imagine if that was that same fish I just hooked. This one looks a little smaller, but it honestly might be the same fish. There you go. Now, I think that other one I hooked was bigger than this. This one looks pretty skinny. Chill out, buddy. There you go. All right, there we go. Took me a few casts, but we made her happen. Nice little bass right there. See ya, bud. Look at that one. That's another hybrid. Look at that. It's an awesome hybrid right there. That one's pretty. That last one was kind of ugly. See ya, bud. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure this is a carp. He came up and smoked this thing. I'm pretty sure this is a carp. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I skipped it up there and I saw this fish come up on it and just slurp it. And I'm almost positive that's a carp. Well, this is a good test of the rod. Finally, we're putting a little bend in it. This is uh, certainly an interesting fish catch right here if we can land this fish. Look at that go. Honestly, this Daiwa Revros's drag is ridiculously good for how uh, cheap of a reel this is. $45 reel. And do you hear that drag? It's smooth, baby. Just wait until this fish kicks off and swims again. It's a big old carp, I'm almost positive. Almost positive. We just gotta keep him from going in a tree or something. Not an easy fish to land on ultralight, but this rod is honestly doing quite well. Chill out, buddy. We gotta get them away from the shallows because there's a bunch of trees and crap. I haven't seen them yet. I saw them at the very beginning and I'm almost positive I saw like a brown, golden type color. So I'm pretty darn positive it's a carp. That is definitely a carp. I just saw that big old tail and that golden color. Oh gosh, oh gosh. He's, all, he's really close. I see my leader. I see my leader. We are not far from this fish and that's actually a big one. This is awkward. This fish wants to go directly behind me. This is awkward. This is awkward. Holy smokes. Stay away from my drive system. Stay away from my drive system. God, look at my, my wrist is honestly getting tired. It's starting to shake a little bit. This fish is destroying me. Can you chill? Okay, this is actually perfect. Get over on this side of the kayak. Look at that rod. It's actually bending for once. Maybe this would be a good carp fishing rod. Maybe that's what this is made for. All right, come on, get up here. God, he just keeps fighting harder and harder. Talk about a bonus fish. Holy smokes. Holy smokes, it's a big one. It's a big one. Okay, okay, okay. Just get up next to the kayak. It's amazing how once they get next to the kayak, they have zero interest in giving up. They see the watercraft and they're like, screw that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I've got my drive system right here and he's trying to get in it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Get in the net. You see he ate that. You see he ate that donkey tail. He straight up ate that donkey tail. It's right in the roof of his mouth. Can you believe that crap? This fish ate the donkey tail. You know, certainly carp get a lot bigger than this, but when you're catching them on an ultralight in the kayak, this is an impressive catch right here. There you have it. There you have it. Oh, that was fun. Okay, so the Daiwa Procyon can handle a fish like that. Not bad. This fish has got to be super exhausted, so to respect this fish, I'm going to get this hook out. All right. Oh. Okay, so today we have obviously put a ton of flex into the Daiwa Procyon, and quite honestly, I'm going to go take a break after that fish. I might come back out this evening. I'm not entirely sure yet, but if I do, that'll be a different video. 
obviously this rod right here holds up to some nice fish. I mean, I caught a nice bonus bass, I caught a nice bonus carp, and uh, this rod was certainly put to the test, but it definitely proved that it can handle them. And uh, I definitely really like this rod, but here's the things that I personally like this rod for. I think this is a great jig fishing rod, um, predominantly for like fish with harder mouths, like, uh, you know, panfish and bass and whatnot, because this is very stout. Like I said, I would really consider this like a light extra fast. Um, so I would say like jig fishing, it's gonna be good for, but it's really not gonna be a super versatile rod. I would probably go for something just a little bit softer if I was gonna be throwing a lot of treble hook baits, or fishing for trout or you know if I want something that can cast the, the super light stuff out there just a little bit better all in all though I really really like this Daiwa Procyon it's a super unique rod and like I said it caught me some nice fish so I can't complain too much if you want to learn more about this rod I will uh, link it in the description below otherwise make sure to stay tuned because I've got a couple more ultralights that I'm excited to test all right thank you so much for watching we'll catch you next time